Mark Speck the Comics and I'm back. This time I'm going to show you my comic pickups from this past week and weekend. If you're interested in seeing what I picked up, stay tuned for that intro. <laughs> Alright, so welcome back. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification so when I do put out some content, you'll get it in a timely fashion. Um, apologies for my last video. There was some poor editing in the beginning. Um, didn't realize that until obviously when the video went went up on uh, YouTube. So uh, that was pretty embarrassing. Um, so I'm going to show you what I picked up from last week. I went to uh, my comic shop. Haven't been there in a, you know probably in the last couple of weeks. And uh, picked up one of my, well, my only book that I have on poll. And um, picked up some other books that I had on there. A couple of books I had on my top five list. And then on Sunday, I ended up going to uh, Brimfield, which is the country's largest flea market. They only host three events a year, and it's a week-long event. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about that. And, um, you know, just show you what I got. Didn't make any con like video of uh, Brimfield when I went on Sunday. It was raining just about the whole time we were there. Um, ended up meeting up with my buddy Sean while I was there as well. So it was really cool to see him again. Um, so let me start off with the books I picked up at the LCS. And then I'll show you what I got at the um, at Brimfield. Um, so I did pick up my one and only poll. It was... Um, Twig number five. I don't have it on me. It's actually downstairs because the uh, little guy's reading it. And uh, when I talked to him, the uh, comic shop owner, he actually said that it was the last issue of the current story arc. And I thought that the series was going to end, but I guess on the last page it said it was going to continue at a future date. So um, I gotta, I gotta still read that. I haven't read it yet, but. I know my wife's read it to him like probably five times already. <laughs> um, so with that being said, I ended up just going in the kids section of the um, of the comic shop and picked up some uh, just some books for him to read in the ne you know next weeks or so because uh, there won't be any any twig for uh, I guess for the foreseeable future. So I did pick up in the in the kids section, picked up uh, Roger Rabbit. Uh, issue number one, uh, issue number two, issue number three, and issue number four. So these were all uh, two bucks a piece. I got like a small discount for being to have a for having a poll on there. So I think that ended up coming out to like seven and change. So that wasn't bad. And I, when I realized. These are all like newsstands, so that was pretty cool. Um, I do like this cover as well. This is a pretty cool cover. Seeing him getting painted on. All the rub out is what they call it. But uh, that was pretty neat. I'm excited to read those. Um, so I picked these up for him. And I did say I picked up a couple of books for myself. And uh, they were uh, both actually on my top five list. They did not have uh, Batman. They actually ran out. I was kind of surprised. But um, they did have... Aliens number one. This was the uh, PX. I guess the uh, I forget it was a Diamond Retailers exclusive. This was cover price. Really nice uh, black and white. And then the one book I was really uh, excited to read was the um, Shock Shop issue number one. Uh, this this has the uh, the flip cover. Two different stories on there. Um, talked to the shop owner about it, and he said it was actually a really good read as well. So that's what I got at the um, comic shop, and then I went to uh, Brimfield on Sunday. Uh, like I said, I met up with my friend Sean, and just you know, was there for about an hour and a half. And when they stated that it's the largest flea market in the country, it's never seen anything remotely close to it. It, I've been to like Raynham, and um, Raynham's a pretty good sized flea market in Massachusetts. Yeah, I've never been to Massachusetts. Massachusetts has a ton. Of flea markets, some better than others, and um, and Raynham's a pretty good size, and Brimfield is is like half the half the town. It seems like it was basically right off the main street, and 
there's tents upon tents for at least a good three quarters of a mile. So think, just think about that for a second. About three quarters of a mile of just shops, tons of tents, tons of vendors of all sorts, you know, and varying and antiques from furniture to rugs to food trucks to collectibles. So uh, it, it was just unbelievable. Um, I wish I had more time to spend there. I guess next next time I go back, which it won't be until next year, because they only do three showings a year, and it's like all week long from what I gathered. And then they have smaller individual shows there within the flea market that they host weekly. Um, so when I get a chance next year, I'll go back and try to see if I can spend more time. They're probably like earlier in the week, midweek or something like that, not on a Sunday. It just happened that it was raining most of the day there, which kind of sucked. Um, didn't pick up much there. I went to one vendor, and I was looking to see if they had any um, sports cards, and they did. So I ended up picking up really cool Trevor Lawrence um, rookie card. This is from, what's this, Absolute, is this Panini, yeah. Um, they had it listed at $3, he sold it for 2 bucks, so that was pretty cool, and that's right around, FMV is like 3 bucks. and I've just been picking up, you know, Trevor Lawrence rookie cards when I can, that's my second one, um, the first one was actually a -OK to me from uh, Cole, so uh, shout out to you man. And then um, I went to one vendor, and, he, and uh, Sean told me that they had a lot of, like, older books. So I went there, started looking around. They had some early Silver Age, some Golden Age as well. And uh, one book stood out to me, and <clears throat> actually my son grabbed it too when he, when he saw it. And this was um, Walt Disney's Comics and Stories, issue number 232. This came out in... Uh, 1959. So uh, I I like collecting these. You know, this isn't like technically a Christmas cover, but it's like a, it's a you know it's a winter cover. You get the snow there. Um, you, you see Donald Duck there with Huey, Louie, and Dewey, and uh, they're playing some music. Um, colors look great inside. You know, for a book this old, you know, they get white pages on here. It's really cool, and you can see there's more like winter winter uh, themed stories in here so pretty nice pretty nice uh, pickup he was asking 30 bucks for it I got him down to 20 and um, he saw that you know my son was interested in the book and he threw in a couple of other um, Walt Disney comics and story books uh, it was um, I think it was issue 550 which is like a commemorative issue came out like much later like in 1990 and there was like another one that had like a um, a Thanksgiving themed cover, it was like a turkey on the front and everything like that. I would show you those, but he's already <laughs> he's already shredded the books. He's opened them up, and we've already read it several times. So <laughs> right, there's no point in showing those off now. But um, that's really it, you know, um, from my experience from uh, Brimfield and my comic pickups this week. So uh, let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. And until next time, Mark's back to comics. Out.